Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so this is a 79-year-old uh, male who initially presented with abdominal pain. He had constant upper abdominal pain for about two weeks, uh, but it was acutely worse yesterday, so he presented to the uh, emergency room. Uh, there was no associated nausea, vomiting, no diarrhea, constipation, no fevers or chills. His only past medical history is prostate cancer. He was first diagnosed in 2009, and he, he declined radiation or, or surgery as treatment options. Only home medications are Tylenol and, and Miralax, which he uses as needed. One, Next slide, please. Good. Uh, on physical exam, his, his vital signs were all within normal limits. His abdomen was generally uh, a, a non-tender without peritoneal signs, and the physical was otherwise non-contributory. Uh, labs, most significant, just hem uh, hemoglobin and hematocrit within normal limits. A CT abdomen pelvis was performed within, uh, in the emergency room. Next slide, please. So we're looking at, at axial, v, axial view, and, and as you can see, there's a, a, a large partially calcified splenic aneurysm. And it was found to be associated with a pancreatic tail mass. Can we go to, to, to the next slide, please? Mm -hmm. And this shows the, shows the splenic artery aneurysm uh, on coronal mm -hmm. view with the associated uh, pancreatic, uh, mixed cystic and solid pancreatic tail mass. Okay, next slide, please. So, uh, uh, for the assessment, 79-year-old male with a history of prostate cancer found to have a mixed solid and cystic pancreatic tail mass with an associated splenic artery aneurysm. And the plan today is for splenic artery angiogram and aneurysm embolization. So, uh, sort of standard fashion here, we have a 4-5 uh, slender um, uh, radial sheath. This is the Sarah uh, engaging the descending aorta. Next, please. Thank you. Uh, Sarah radial, uh, 110 Sarah radial in the splenic artery. You see that giant splenic artery aneurysm. How big is this again, Matt? Uh, 4.1 centimeters. Yeah, 4 centimeters, in my opinion, that's that's giant. And I, actually, I, I think that's in the transverse plane. I think in the uh, cranial caudal plane, it's uh, it's about 5 centimeters, honestly, if you include the entire hematoma that's associated with it. Um, hmm. It obviously brings up a very interesting question of, is this a contained rupture into the tail of the pancreas, or was it a pancreatic tail mass that eroded into the splenic artery? Uh, it's sort of chicken or the egg. I don't think we know which 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 one it is. Um, it begs a lot of questions of how do you want to tackle this. So here we have a, a four French directional catheter. Um, can we show that unsubtracted, please? I think that would be really helpful. And you can see that the the calcifications are are very easily seen uh, on the uh, subtracted images. Can, can we uh, unsubtract the images, please? There you go. So cy cycle it. So you see we're right in the aneurysm. You see the calcified rim. You see how much hematoma is there uh, within the aneurysm. And we're just negotiating through the outflow. Next uh, uh, image, please, or next angiogram. So now we're in the roof of the aneurysm. And again, you see the discordance between the calcified rim and the flow lumen of this, and then the sort of dominant outflow here. And again, it's you know, if you just look at the flow lumen, maybe it's four centimeters. If you include the whole hematoma, it's way over five centimeters in diameter. Um, and then we we tried for a couple of minutes to get into the outflow, but and it was probably a little bit too much manipulation that I wanted to give this giant aneurysm. And then uh, Joe took over, and Joe was able to successfully wire the outflow here, um, like the master that he is. Um, and then we were able to uh, set the, you know, the whole thing up. You can see the microcatheter going out into the outflow. Next, next, please. And then we're sort of looped into the upper pole branch. Next, please. And then we have our microcatheter out into the uh, basically the splenic hilum. We've reduced the the redundancy in the flow lumen of the aneurysm itself a little bit. And you know, this always begs the question of do you want to completely straighten it out and try and get something stiff across it, or do you want to do what's probably a little bit more gentle? Next, please. Um, this is us just confirming where we are. And again, we're, we're trying to sort of get into a good position to start dealing with the outflow. Next, please. And this is our first anchor. Um, and this was a um, Azure coil, uh, which is being commercially distributed by Terumo Medical. 
Um, it was an 838 uh, Azure CX coil. And you can see it just looped very nicely and created a sort of anchor distally. Uh, next, please. And here's the second coil going in. And we're just going to build this, again, anchor right up into the aneurysm. And obviously, as you can see, we have an, uh, a, a four-French catheter in the aneurysm itself. So we can use 035 coils in the aneurysm and hopefully be done with this in about 15 minutes or so, 15, 20 minutes. Um, so I think we're going to put in another um, Azure CX coil. And Joe's going to start deploying this inside the outflow and keep going. So one thing, I, I th thank you for the comment. I, I would say that you know, it, being able to get a four French catheter into the aneurysm itself is really helpful here, and it gives you just a little bit more support. So you're not just sort of winging around and trying to you know find something uh, randomly. Um, and we've we've gotten very comfortable doing this. The the four French catheter we have here is actually an Aqua Tempo, um, which hmm. just has a lot of support. And uh, we've 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 used 035 uh, coils through it uh, for years now, and we feel it's a very stable system in order to introduce uh, you know larger larger coils. It's not going to kick you out. It's going it's going to take it very very well. So we're having a little bit of trouble with the coil, and we're going to see if we can get this to go or not. And I think honestly we probably are going to have to switch to a different coil. So can we have another one of those coils? So we're just loading the coil in. So let's get that off. Yep, perfect. And here we go. Loading in the next coil. Um, this is measuring, a, this, this inflow and outflow is measuring uh, somewhere between 7 and 8 millimeters. It's not like a giant hypertrophy vessel like we were dealing with on the first case this morning, but it, it's sizable. So, you know, using a traditional, you know, pipeline uh, variety, I, 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 don't, I don't think they're going to come out with those sizes anytime soon. So you're, you're, you're sort of stuck trying to make this up uh, or, or sort of build it. You know, you know, not to not to be really silly, but you could stack up a couple of uh, supera stents and uh, see if you could make that work a couple of times. I, I I don't know whether that would really work, obviously, but and then I I don't know if we showed this before the CX coils. If you could lean back just a little bit, so if you guys could see that, you have the, the handle going in, the green light goes off, and you get the acoustic feedback which makes this uh, coil very, very easy to use. And then you know that it's detached, obviously. And then we can you know, pull out the, the you know, leader wire and take it from there. Um, so <laughs> what I, I think we're going to do is we're going to go through a little bit of effort here to try and really be able to reliably deliver 035 coils. So I'm actually going to put in an, uh, a floppy 035 wire and just get a little bit more purchase with this uh, four French catheter. And then we'll start to deliver some 035 coils. And um, for those of you that use, uh, you know, 035 fibered coils, I think you'd all agree that you use two or three of them. It'll thrombose anything that they go into, which is I would much rather do that, spend the extra 30 seconds on up front, than uh, start piling in another 30, uh, you know, 018 coils into this giant aneurysm. And this is something where it's so big, I really don't, want to leave this even remotely to 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 chance in any way shape or form so again i think this just that slight maneuver there just to get it up i think gives us so much more stability in order to deliver 035 coils and i i, I think that was worth it the effort there um and so now obviously the 035 coils are just going to drop down into the flow channel of, of the of the aneurysm um and we're going to start to fill th this up so this is the first 035 coil going in and you can see it's just falling in very nicely. We've got a very stable system here, which I love. Love stability. And there we go. We're almost out. And now we're out. Okay. So we're just going to keep on going with this. Another one. I don't know if, I don't know if, the, if the, the camera can zoom in on that, but um, that's one of the you know, cube coils that has a very complex shape, and it fills up a lot of space. Hmm. 
I think we're gonna put in one more coil here, and then maybe we'll switch over to a a, uh, a, 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 a a Tarumo coil. So you can see how much more substantive this coil mass is than what what's in the outflow. And obviously mm -hmm. the outflow is going to be sealed with something with a with a with a with a tail that long, obviously. But for especially this annuals, because of its size, we're 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 going to try to do our best to go through something that approximates you know a more nice platinum than than you can see through, yeah. uh, which is my sort of rule of of engagement. The more platinum, the better. You don't want to be able to see through it. You want this to be sealed up once and for all. Yep. Uh, so if we can. I, th I think you guys got it. So we got the whole thing lined up. You know, Joe's going to feed me the wire. And we're going. Let's keep it straight. Um, this is a very different pusher wire than the um, Interlock 035. Um, you should be good. Okay. And we're going to keep going now. And you're going to see this start to engage in just a second. So here's this coil going through. It's engaged in the outflow, which is just a nice little added bonus. And you can see we're filling up there. All right. And then we're going to detach just like before. Rob, what was the size of that coil? That was a 20 by 39. So I think we're going to take another one of those. Do you think that the ideology determines whether you fill the sack or not, or you would fill the sack in, in any case regardless? I fill the sack in any case regardless, and that's really my sort of lessons learned from uh, many years ago. And I, I, if I sound like a broken record, I, I, I apologize. But you know, when I was just starting out and we would have a case like this, and honestly, we would say like, oh, there's a, there's a lot of coils in there. We're, we're, we are probably done. It will likely thrombose. That was part of the vernacular. Um, and we would you know, speak that way frequently. And unfortunately, most of them were, were, were my cases. And I had uh, about a handful of cases that had to come back because we got an MRA and there was continued perfusion or reperfusion, whatever term you want to use. And I said, this is really not fair to the patient um, because what I translated it to was either a technical deficit in the equipment that I was using or, or me just not being compulsive enough and not advocating for the, uh, for the patient enough. And so I think we've gotten to a much more aggressive stance where we, we want this to be one and done. Uh, and in my opinion, one and done is filling up the sack and making sure that it's never going to recanalize. The, the images that we're seeing of this aneurysm look really, really good, Rob. I mean, it's uh the, the, it may be the floral setting that you have, but just the contrast of these coils and in, in, in the way that you set it up looks really good. Are you, you think you're almost done? You're getting pretty yeah, close. Yeah. So right? I think I think we're I think we're going to put in one more 035, back out the 035 catheter, and then put one or two 035 coils in the inflow, and then we're going to be done. Yeah, uh, as you can see, we, we got the 035 coils to back us out really, really nicely. And, uh, you know, we're, we're putting in our, our last coil. And, you know, there's obviously quotes around that. But everyone knows what I, what I <laughs> you know, mean when I say, quote, unquote, last coil. Um, but obviously, the, the 035 coils just backed us out. You can see we have this very dense coil mass in the aneurysm. I feel like we, we totally got this. And, you know, in typical form, we're going to drop this last coil uh, which you guys can watch while we're live here. And you can see it's just going right into the inflow. And it's going to double over a little bit more like that. That's and, beautiful. yeah, this is such a nice inflow packing. And, honestly, we're going to wait here two or three minutes, but I think everybody agrees we're probably done. Um, when in, in my experience, this is uh, as meticulous as a surgical ligation and aneurysmectomy that we can get so close to the aneurysm on, on, on both sides, obviously. So I don't know if anybody's any comments or criticisms, but we got you know a ton of platinum into the coil. Uh, sorry, in, into the aneurysm. We were able to nail the outflow and the inflow, you know, brilliantly. And we're, we're just going to wait it out a couple of minutes. Thanks, Rob. Uh, and, and thank right. you guys for your hard work today. That was great. And I know we've all been busy. Hopefully we can all relax uh, tonight and we'll be back at work tomorrow.
So uh, <laughs> exactly. I also want to thank Med in Box. Med in Box was great today. They really just did a complete, you know, uh, varsity home run grand slam to manage all these different rooms that we were running. And it's great that we were able to show so many cases. I hope the audience enjoyed it. I hope the panelists enjoyed it. And uh, again, I, I I agree with Aaron's sentiment. We couldn't have done this without Med in Box. So thank you very very much, everybody. All right. Have a great evening. <laughs> okay.